So, Michael, good evening. It's well, it's even here in the UK. Um, afternoon over where you are, of course. Now, a lot of people will know you now um, since last time we had you on. <laughs> Sam and Sam and I interviewed you last time. Um, I guess you've had quite a bit of attention over the last few weeks from the Droid Builders. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. Um, <laughs> I've gotten to connect with a bunch of people over email. Um, jumped onto a couple of Zoom chats and gotten to, you know. Uh, have some really nice back and forth, got some great suggestions, a lot of people who are really excited about the project and have um, plans for um, putting it to use that I hadn't even uh, conceived of when I was starting out. So it's it's been fun seeing uh, and hearing all the things that people are going to do with it. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised by the, all the attention you have had and the apps had and so on. You know, it's 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 worthwhile. It's a, it's a worthy thing to do. And I just can't thank you enough for what you've done. And um, and still your attention to detail even now. I, I wondered if you would just do this, and it's amazing as it is. And you would say, "Well, that's it. There you go, guys. Enjoy it." But uh, you're still ploughing on, and you're doing more, which is why you've kindly come on for a, another catch up and a video that we're going to drop for people to see some updates you've done. I believe. Yeah. Um, I mean, the uh, the bones are done, so now it's now it's time to just expand and uh, you know do some of the really fun stuff. Amazing. Great. So um, the app, first of all, which is already available on all um, good platforms such as Google Play um, through the Apple Store. And is that it? Is there anywhere else people can get it as well? Um, they can get it. Uh, they can download a, a build for Windows um, okay. from humancyborgrelations.com. Right. Cool. So I believe you have an update which you're about to drop, which you would like to share with us now. I do. So one of the most common requests that I got was people who wanted to have finer control over the sounds that the vocalizer makes. And it makes sense that that's where people would go because all of these early systems were all about control. You would have, um, they, they worked like a soundboard and you would, you could upload whatever sounds you wanted to a slot in the soundboard. Um, and it could be cycling through a couple similar sounds at random, or it could be one sound that maybe you're accustomed to that you like to work into your performance. And people want to have a reliable way to recall that particular sound. And so my initial reaction to that was that's sort of the antithesis of, of this project. This project's all about um, variation, organic voicings, sounds that sound different every single time, not hitting the same sound over and over and over. But as I talked more about this with people, um, I came to find that they don't actually want the exact same sound played over and over and over. Um, they want a con, they want a, um, a, a certain cadence or like a, a certain, um, just a, a certain quality of sound to be played over and over and over. And just... if the software can allow them to play a sound with that cadence, but in a way that's still varied and fresh every single time, it achieves what they want. They still get control over the sort of sound they want, but it's still, um, you're still getting the magic of this software, which is in its ability to produce these sounds that are um, just so, so living um, and just can, help your help your builds connect with people in person in real time in a way that um, a simple soundboard can't and it's really um it's it's similar to so if you think of how video games used to sound say in the early 90s um you would hear the same sound over and over and over because of hardware limitations you would hear you know you'd be you'd be beating on some enemy and you'd hear ah 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 over yeah. and over and over and a very important evolution in game sound that came along with the evolutions in graphics that we all obviously are aware of and know, um, was the ability to uh, vary those kinds of sounds for a more organic experience. And as with Droid Audio, it's not necessarily one of the first things you'd point to when you talk about um, improvements in generations of video games, but it's something that's had um, an equally important effect as the visual side of those improvements uh, in creating just a, a rich and a, um, a living experience. Right. I see. So basic, what you're saying is basically that, you know, it's still important, I think, that your software is still generating these random sounds. But what you're doing now is giving people a little bit more control over sound they may like the sound of, 
which they want to repeat, but not exactly the same. So exactly right. Okay, right. So it's like an audio pattern. They like the length of it, maybe, and the the, the pattern of it. They still want to make it well. Your software is designed to make it still bearable. Um, so you've added this to the app, I guess. Have you? Uh, that's right. So maybe. here is what that looks like. So this uh, everyone will recognize. This is the yep, main interface, familiar. and these Indeed. are yeah, <laughs> the um, emotional stimulus buttons. Um, if we scroll over to the memory bank, you'll see this is a little bit different now. Um, so we now have more memory slots because they're an important component of this new feature. And we also have this option to choose between strict playback and organic playback. And I'll demonstrate how that works in just a second. So here is uh, the big page that delivers this feature people are requesting. Um, this is, uh, I call it the script menu, like a, you know, like you're writing a film script. And it's basically um, an audio sequencer built into the R2 vocalizer. So you have your list of uh, sound categories over here. Let's start with a bird song. And let's start with, uh, let's just pick bird song D. So that's bird song D. You hear it get vocalized. You could check out some other bird songs if you're not sure which one you want. But we're going to go with D for now. So we're going to lock in that sound. Good question, Michael. When mm -hmm. you're saying the chips, selecting the chipmunk sound, is that going to be the same chipmunk sound every time or is that a random chipmunk sound? No, it's, um, so you are, this is kind of the uh, the header for category. And yep. then when you select chipmunk, you see all of the different, every oh, single apologies. one of these Sorry, is a yeah. different I missed chipmunk that. word. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's yeah, a good I question. Pay attention, I've got you. Yep, okay. No, we're good. So we've locked in our birdsong D. And so now we could pick uh, another sound to come after that. So maybe we feel like we want an alarm. So let's go with alarm A. And um, we can hear how that sounds all played back. And it's a little awkward because right now there's no pause in between those two words. So that's where this slider comes into play. So we can adjust the gap in between words. So I'm sorry, Michael, I'm laughing, but this is, this is unbelievable. I'm blown away yet again, but sorry, sorry, carry on. <laughs> Thank you. So that that's a nice vocalization, but if you're a real R2 speech buff, you might notice that those two particular words, no one will notice this, but people, no one will actively notice it, but you might, your intuition might say something is a little bit strange about this, this pairing of words or the timing. Um, so you could do this, but maybe you want to leverage the power of the software's grammatical artificial intelligence to help you create a more standard, more cohesive sort of R2 vocalization. So here we have our birdsong D. Let's say instead of picking a random alarm, you'll notice if you scroll down to some of these categories, some of them appear green. Yeah. And what that tells you is there's a word at least one word within each of those categories that is allowed to follow the bird song D that we chose initially, according to R2's uh, rules for grammatical speech. So let's go with, let's check out the whistles. So there are a bunch of them here that are gonna work. So let's, let's try whistle C. So that's like, that sound, that feels a little more familiar. And the other thing we can do in here is we can adjust this gap. And when you're using a word that is um, a, a typical sequence, so for example, a word that would come after another particular word, as we are in this case, this little incandescent light over here in the bottom right will light up when you've selected a gap that is within the acceptable range. So we can see there's a there's a little range in here. These usually come in pretty quick succession is what this is telling us. So let's pick somewhere in that range. So that's that's a vocalization or at least a piece of one that will appear 
um, if not directly in the films, um, is very closely related grammatically to one that would appear in the films. So it's not, um, this isn't operating under the canonical mode, which you might be familiar with if you use the app a little bit. Um, it's using the improvisational mode basically to construct this logic. So, okay, we've got those two. Let's just blast through and pick in a couple other quick ones. And we're gonna go typical gaps each time. Let's go with that one. All right, so here's our vocalization. So that is R2. And once we have that, we can go back here to the memory panel and we can save it. And I'm gonna, just for uh, simplicity, trim this down a little bit. So here's what we have. And I'm gonna save this to slot one. And now if we play this back with strict playback, we're gonna hear the exact same vocalization every single time. So you have that option if you do want that effect. But the magic of the software comes into play under this organic playback option. And what this does is it uses the software's intelligence to create um, enough variation that each vocalization sounds organic sounds alive, um, but still captures the same cadence of the vocalization that you scripted. So here again is the original. And here's some organic vocalizations. So it's the same cadence. It's roughly the same length. There's gonna be a little bit of variety in there, but every single time it's gonna sound a little bit different. And so now you have a way to, if you wanted for some kind of comedic effect to play the same sound back to back over and over, you're still going to get that same effect, but you're going to have uh, a living, breathing, organic vocalization that's subtly different every time and doesn't sound like you're just hammering on a soundboard from an early 90s video game. So that is the power of the scripting interface. That's and fantastic. That is so good. I'd really... Can I just ask, mm -hmm. where, where you're saving the audio files, if you find a nice file that you like and, a, and the right length, if, if for any reason you're trying to get a particular length of, of audio for R2, when you do the random sound still on your saved audio, will it stay around the same sort of length? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. going to be... I could look up mathematically kind of what the limits would be. It's gonna, the amount of variation is gonna depend on, uh, every single word is gonna have a different kind of range of possible variations, but it's going to stay roughly within the same range, probably within uh, maybe, well, it also is gonna depend on the length of your vocalization, because if you have scripted a vocalization that's a minute long, technically yep. there's nothing stopping you from doing that, then yep. Obviously, it's going to scale as a percentage of the total length, gotcha. the, the possible okay, variability. Yeah. But for the most part, you're going to get something back that, for all intents and purposes, functions the same way as the thing you put in. Gotcha. Okay. Brilliant. It's just, just uh, you know, just uh, not as I'm saying it's necessary, but uh, just a handy thing to know, really. I think. So that's, totally. that's fantastic. That is so cool. Amazing. So, is that available? If, if has that dropped? Uh, yes, it is uh, now available, and okay. um, if you uh, hop into your favorite store and your update page, you should uh, be able to find it and uh, start right. messing around with it. Brilliant. I wonder if anybody finds it before they find this video. There, there'll be a few people fiddling about maybe and like, hey, I've found this, got this new discovery. I found the app's been updated. They'll get excited, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll drop this anyway, this, this YouTube video, and we'll place it everywhere. So hopefully everyone will be made aware of this as, as soon as possible. It's, it's brilliant, Michael. And, you know, your attention to detail is just phenomenal. And it's not even something I thought of. You know, obviously someone sowed that seed in your head and off you've gone and um, achieved that. It's fantastic. It's amazing. So, so what next? What, what else have you been up to? What else? So, good question. Uh, another common request has been from people who have built other astromechs uh, from Star Wars or who maybe have designed their own astromechs and want to be able to use a system like this for a droid that is an R2. 
uh, which is kind of an, an understandable question to ask and next step to want to take. And so with that in mind, I have come back with... Michael, you've got so much to show me now. I know, you know, you've just shown us one section of, of work you've been on. But I think what we'll do is we're going to release that that you've just shown. And I think the next part we'll release in a week or two's time. Is that okay with you? Rather than bombard people with all these amazing things you've done, these three things that you've done, um, let's just do one at a time. So can we release it in a week or two's time, maybe, do you think? I think that's a great idea. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. That's brilliant. So rather than bombard people with everything, um, tune in and subscribe and just keep an eye on the YouTube channel. And there'll be another video, which we are shooting now, but rather than drop it all in one go, stay tuned and it will um, drop very soon. Good man. Thank you, Michael.